As you're going through your adventuring life, you might not think that performance might be something that you really need to work on. But although it might not provide a direct action for you, it does allow you to set up some other things as you go further along within your particular turns. And it does help your team. So it's something to keep an eye on. And it's really good for bards, as a matter of fact. My name is Don. I'm trying to be the Sly Strategist. And let's go ahead and talk about it. So the performance skill means that you are skilled at a form of performance using whatever talents you have in order to impress a crowd or possibly to make a living. You could have a wonderful voice for singing. You could be a great actor, or you could be great on the soapbox and be a great orator, or you could be fantastic at dance. What the performance skill allows you to do is it allows you to try to impress. Now, performance really does depend on charisma as its main stat. However, you do need some other stats in order to really be good at these things. And the GM might apply various penalties depending on what you're trying to do and what he or she thinks you might need. For example, let's say you want to be a great orator and you want to give a, a speech. So not only is it your charisma that you need to worry about, your intelligence might also have something to do with that, especially if it's not just a speech you're giving off a piece of paper that maybe you had someone else write for you, but if you are participating in a debate, then you might need to have the intelligence or the wisdom. So with these specific things, the GM might change the DC of what you need to roll. If you are working on impressing a crowd with a dance and your dexterity is quite low, that might affect the DC. If you are trying to perform or sing and you have a poor charisma, well, that's not only going to affect your role, it might also affect the DC. So these are things to keep in mind. Charisma is great for performance, but you might also need other stats in order to balance those out. Now, there are certain performance traits. So when you use an action that utilizes the skill performance, it gains one or two traits. And by traits, we mean what you have to do in order to accomplish that performance. So the GM might change these things depending on what the circumstances are. But the most co common performance-based traits are listed in a table, and we'll go ahead and kind of cover these. This might be if you want to act or perform comedy, well, then you need auditory traits, linguistic traits, and visual traits. If you are trying to dance, then you're going to need movement as well as visual traits. If you would like to play an instrument, well, then you're going to need auditory and the ability to manipulate in order for playing the strings or moving the valves on your a brass instrument. If you are going to orate or sing, you might need an auditory trait or a linguistic trait. So these specific traits generally translate to certain things. Auditory means the ability to project your voice or to be able to be heard in a crowd. Linguistic means that you are good with your words. Visual is obvious. The ability of your actions, your body movements, how well that you can convince people. Movement is almost, for dance specifically, related to your dexterity and how well your movements could translate into something that could mesmerize a crowd. Uh, manipulate, as stated, plucking strings or moving valves on your brass instruments or being able to play a flute. These are You'll need to know how to manipulate these things. So these traits are all part of what can be considered a performance. And it is the GM's decision on what traits are necessary for any particular performance you would like to try to perform. Now, there is a perform action. It is a one action action in the three action economy, and it does hold the concentrate trait. So when you're making a brief performance, be it a single song or a, a little dance or trying to do a few jokes, you would use the perform action. 
It's most useful when you want to prove your capabilities or to impress someone quickly. And the performance itself is rarely going to actually do the deed. It would be something that you would use prior to doing a diplomacy check in order to influence the DC. And if you succeed or critically succeed, it could really help you try to overcome that DC. And if you fail or critically fail, it could really hurt you trying to overcome that DC on that subsequent diplomacy check. And it might even help change their attitudes. It just depends on how the GMCs fit. So in this performance action, you basically have the normal versions of success you would have a critical success. In that case, your performance impresses the observers and they're likely to share stories of your ability. So not only might it help the thing right in front of you for your diplomacy check, but it would also have stories that go far and wide about a wonderful performer might be in the town at the time. With a success, you prove yourself and the observers appreciate what you did for them and the quality of your performance. So that could really help you try to overcome that DC of the diplomacy that you are going to perform. A failure means your performance falls flat. It is likely not going to affect your DC one way or the other, but it didn't do anything for you. It's almost like you might as well not have tried. And then a critical failure, you are demonstrating the way that, I love the way they put it, you're demonstrating only incompetence. In that particular case, the DC could be drastically harder for you to try to overcome. There are things that you can do with the performance skill, whether you are trained or not. So we'll cover these in the next section. So in regards to your proficiency in the performance skill, you can go anywhere from untrained all the way up to legendary. And once again, because this one is really GM dependent, it gives you some examples of what you might be able to accomplish depending on your proficiency status. So if you are untrained, you might be able to influence an audience of commoners in like a town square or at a market, but not real patrons of the arts. If you are trained, you could possibly impress an audience of artisans who might have some skill themselves and your performance might have moved them in some way. An expert means that you can impress or influence an audience of merchants or minor nobles. These are people who have seen performances far and wide, and their vision of the arts isn't limited in scope to just their local area. If you are a master, you might be able to influence an audience of high nobility or minor royalty, people who have other performers come to them for patronage or for additional skill, money, fame, but you would be able to impress those people. And if you are legendary, the best of the best, you can influence an audience of major royalty or otherworldly beings. Now with the performance skill and your training, there is a way that you can earn an income based on your performance. So if there is downtime and specifically downtime activity within your campaign, let's say you're not doing anything for two weeks. Well, you can perform a trained action that is earn income and you would use one of your skills that you have. Let's say you're a bard and you can play the lute. Well, you can go out into the market square and you can busk and see if you can raise some money. You could sing to an audience once again, of people on the street, you could go to a theater and try to earn a spot performing in a play, or you could go to town hall and give a speech to inspire the locals. But these are all things that you could do in order to earn income. The GM would assign a task level to the various things you can do. And there is a chart. Um, I do suggest you actually look it up, but I'll definitely show it here. Actually, we'll go ahead and put it on this side here. It's going to look kind of small in this video, but it's definitely something that you can look up and you can see what you can earn by performing a certain level of task with a certain level of training. And it is something that you can 
do in your downtime rather than just sit around and wait for other people to complete what they need to get done while earning income. So the performance skill to me is one of those skills that is usually only looked at if you are a bard. And I really think it's useful in a bunch of other ways, both with the perform action to help set up a diplomacy check, as well as earning income are both very valuable. And I do hope that this maybe gave you another, another look into what you can do with your performance skill. But we're going to go ahead and leave it at that. So I do hope you liked the video. Hope you learned something, saw it a different way, or maybe got a few ideas of your own. But if you did like it, feel free to like, subscribe, or hit that notification bell. And regardless of what you do, I hope you have a great day. Happy adventuring, and thanks.